Hey guys, it's Major of Miners, and I am back from the dead. I've been gone for like the weekend and a couple of days. I haven't uploaded for about five days, and that is because I went to Reading Festival for Friday and Saturday, and then on the Sunday, I had like some fucking asthma problem, and I had to go home, almost fucking choked to death, which wasn't cool. And I got mugged for my wristband, which also wasn't cool. And these fucking this this these hench couple of people. One uh one hench twenty year old and one really strong twenty one year old. They start they start following me for ages. And at the time I was only thinking about my asthma, so I didn't really give a shit. Um I just didn't really pay attention to it. And then eventually they just cut me off and was just like, Give us your fucking bridge band or we'll beat the shit out of you, pretty much what they said. Um I may be over exaggerating for dramatic effect, but that's pretty much the gist of what was said. And I just said, look, to be honest, I'm already leaving Redden Festival anyway because I'm about to show it to death. So fucking take my wristband, just don't beat the shit out of me because I can't be bothered. And they just kind of paused for a second and were like, okay, fair enough. And then got some like, lighter thing out and burnt off the thing. Wasn't the most pleasant experience of my life, but to be honest, that's the first time I've ever been mugged. And, you know, that wasn't that bad. It was kind of like a fucking business interaction, kind of. It was just like, hey, I don't want to be fucking mugged. I don't want to be beaten up, so just take the wristband. You know, it wasn't too bad. Um, but it was pretty annoying at the same time. Um, but I got home, got an inhaler, and I was all fucking good to go. Um, now, this gameplay here is a 42 for 1, and I'm using the TAR 21. It's a pretty darn long gameplay, so I fast-forwarded through all the uh, slow bits. Because the problem with this game was, there were a lot of people playing defensively um, on the other team. And they were sticking to this top right corner, the way I'm facing here, the way I'm going to put the airstrike, they're, they're, they're sitting in that corner, and they weren't really coming out much, and it was really hard to flip the spawns, because there's al there would always be one person left in there, so, and on top of that, they had anti-air classes, so they were just fucking cock-blocking you whenever you got anywhere. Um, the second thing to know about this gameplay is that I'm not using the chopper gunner, so I was pretty proud. It's not often I don't use a chopper gunner, because I fucking love the chopper gunner. I mean... I know, I know people, like, complain about Chopper Gunner, but me personally, like, I actually enjoy watching gameplays with Chopper Gunner and just seeing who can get the most kills out of anyone with their Chopper Gunner. So it's not that big a deal to me, but if people don't like watching it, it's fair enough. But, you know, with this kind of gameplay, like, I don't know, with, with a Chopper Gunner in this gameplay, I reckon I could have gotten a 50 kill team deathmatch, and that was kind of what was depressing. But I was using the AC-130 instead. I'm not, I'm not the best AC-130 user. I see people like Sandy Ravage and, uh... I don't know, other good players using the AC-130, and they just go to town with that shit. And I'm not sure I can... I'm not sure I've got the aim right for the AC-130. You've kind of got to time your shots um, pretty well. Whereas the chopper gunner, it's just point and shoot. Um, but yeah, I could have gotten the 50 kill team deathmatch. And the reason I normally use the chopper gunner and all that combination... I mean, I know some people call it cheap, but when you've got a small channel... Uh, okay, so the, there's two types of channels, obviously. The montage makers and the commentators um obviously there's a bunch of other types of channels gaming channels but like those are the main two types i'd say commentators and montage makers and as a montage maker you've got to put out a really well edited montage um with some nice clips and get it seen by the right people um and that's how that's how you get successful as a montage maker really um now as a commentator one of the best ways to get yourself noticed is big score lines and a lot of the time that doesn't depend, it, do, it doesn't really matter on what kill streaks you're using. If you're bringing out like bigger score lines than a lot of the big commentators are using, people will take interest in your channel regardless. And although some people might call it cheap, if I can bring attention to this channel, then later on maybe I'll stop using these big kill streaks. Or all, all I want is some active subscribers, you know, that's all I'm going for. And I don't know. I don't think it's that cheap what I'm trying to do. But f I, uh, if people do, then maybe I'll switch up my kill streaks, um, like I did in this game. And I, I get the 42 for one. It's still a respectable score. Don't get me wrong. I just, I don't know. If I, if I brought out a 50 kill team deathmatch, regardless of the kill streaks, it would get a lot of attention. Um, there's there's no getting past that. Um, and th that wouldn't be bad for my channel. No one could say that was bad for my channel. And, there's not many big commentators who can say they've gotten a 50 kill team deathmatch. In fact, there's hardly any. Um, I know Socrates has gotten one. 
Um, and that was a 50 for 8 on COD 4, I think it was. I'm trying to think of other people who have gotten a 50, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. But I watched the Socrates one, and that was pretty goddamn beastly. Um, I think, oh yeah, Mark of J's got on one as well. Um, probably Theocrats has as well, knowing Theocrats. He probably definitely got one. But um, anyway, back to the uh, game in hand. Now, this is the moment where shit starts to hit the fan. Now, I've got a player who I'm playing with who I like to call my guardian angel in this game, and his name is Mr. Biscuits LNG. he's a person on my friends list, he's been playing with me on Xbox for quite some time, um, and he's a good mate on Xbox, we play, we play a lot, and he's starting a YouTube channel in a little bit, so you might want to check him out, he's in my box, he's called Mr. Biscuits LNG. um, but I like to call him my guardian angel in this game, and that's because, he, he just does a lot of shit to help me out in this game, because these players are taking a really defensive role, so I needed someone to push up, and he's just offered to, to push up and to help me out, like that, as you'll see him there, he's just pushing forward so I can stay back and not get killed, because I'm just worried about losing my scoreline, um, honestly. And he also shoots down the pave low. I mean, the the enemy team gets a fucking a pave low and a harrier. I mean, is that is that really called for? Why in every good game I get does the enemy team happen to get kill streaks? Because there's there's just always one player who manages to camp at the back, and he was probably the one who was stopping us from being able to uh, flip the spawns. Because if if I'd have been able to flip the spawns, it, things probably would have gone my way a lot better. Because it was kind of hard just having to push up on their spawn all the time and. It got to certain points where you had to be kind of aggressive, and it's quite hard to be aggressive on Wasteland without getting yourself into trouble. Um, so yeah, I like to think of Mr. Biscuits as um, my guardian angel because he sorted out all the uh, the air uh, the air uh, the air support from the enemy team. That makes sense. Um, and as you can see, and what the fuck is that guy doing with that javelin? Like, what? Why would you? Why would you go into a cave? Well, you can't shoot enemy support, enemy air support down anyway. Why would you go into a cave when there's no air support anyway? And the, look at Mr. Biscuits in that fucking last stand there. Now, he was using last stand. It's a pretty gay way to protect me, but he still protects me with the last stand now. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this commentary. If you did, leave a like. It would really help out the channel. And cheers for watching, guys. Peace out.